Shortly after Ichigo's defeat at the hands of Byakuya in the world of the living, Ichigo is approached by Kisuke Urahara. Kisuke offers Ichigo a chance at gaining entrance into the Soul Society in order to save Rukia. Only if Ichigo agrees to undergo training for 10 days. His training with Uru is the same. Urahara cuts Ichigo's chain of fate and tells him he has only 72 hours to become a Soul Reaper or else he'll holify. And during the last encroachment, Ichigo is forced into his inner world, where he is greeted by Yuha and White. After being introduced to Yuha and White, Ichigo battles the both of them. During this battle, the young Yuha spirit explains to Ichigo who Yuha is and that he'll eventually be forced to face off against him in battle. He also states that he is Ichigo's ally no matter what side he chooses to fight for. And Ichigo also learns of White's origins from the both of them. Ichigo quickly accepts the blades of both Zanpak Toe spirits, developing a harmonious relationship with the two, as we see a huge explosion of Ryatsu from the perspective of Kisuke and his crew. Ichigo emerges from the smoke, donning a single blade identical to his original and his hollow mask, except this time he simply lifts the mask up and says hi instead of smashing it as he did in canon. As a part of Lesson 3, Kisuke challenges Ichigo to knock his hat off his head, and before he can finish speaking, Ichigo uses Sonido to instantly complete the task, much to the surprise of Kisuke and the others. Ichigo pulls Kisuke aside and the two of them have a short discussion about White and what happened with Misaki. Kisuke is surprised that Ichigo was able to learn the truth from his Zanpak toe, and he goes on to state that eventually Ichigo is going to have to pick a side in the war that is to come, but for now they will focus on saving Rukia. He also warns Ichigo that Rukia's execution is likely the doing of Sosuke Aizen, as Central 46 is most likely not the ones giving the orders at the moment. Kisuke readies the Senkaimon and summons Orihime, Chad, and Uryu, and together they head off to the Soul Society. Ichigo and his friends enter the Soul Society after barely escaping the cleaner. They quickly reach the gate to the Serete and are confronted by Jidambo who gets one-shotted this time around. After agreeing to open the gate for Ichigo, Jidambo and the Ryoka come face to face with Gin Ichimaru who attempts to strike at Jidambo and Ichigo with his Zanpak toe, but is shocked when Ichigo is able to block his attack. Gin realizes that Ichigo's evolution is advancing at an alarming rate and so he counters Ichigo's oncoming attack by aiming his next strike directly at Orihime under the assumption that Ichigo would step back and protect her, which he in fact does, leaving Gin with just enough time to close the gate and retreat. Realizing that Ichigo may actually be a credible threat to Aizen and his schemes, Gin decides to keep this information about Ichigo's progress a secret. Everyone retreats to Kukaku's, where Kukaku, Ganju, and Ichigo discuss what happened to Kaien and Ishin. While resting, they all hear a loud bang from across the Serete. They look outside and see the top of some tower-looking structure that has descended on the other side of the Serete. Kukaku explains that this is bad news if those guys are involved, the Zero Division. Before she has time to even finish her sentence, Oetsune Maya has appeared right behind Ichigo without anyone noticing at first. Oetsu puts Ichigo on a chokehold and flash steps back to the Zero Division shuttle where Ichibe is waiting. Ichibe uses Bakudo to restrain Ichigo. With Ichigo restrained, they return to the Royal Palace where Ichibe releases Ichimonji in order to erase both Yuha and Zangetsu's names, stating that they can't have someone like Ichigo wielding such power while being an enemy of the Serete. They proceed to open a gate to the world of the living and tell Ichigo he's going home and not to return while also stating that the rest of the Ryoka can remain in the Soul Society as they are of no threat to the Soul King or the Zero Division and will likely be killed by the Gotei 13. Uryu, Chad, and Orihime sense Ichigo's spiritual pressure disappear. Ichigo lands on his hands and knees back in the world of the living. As the rain begins to pour, he bangs his hands on the ground while shouting that he's a failure and his friends are going to die because of it. A voice in the distance exclaims, So you lost your Soul Reaper powers, huh? That's too bad. Ichigo looks back to see two men standing in the rain. The dark haired man who spoke goes on to explain that their names are Ginjo and Tsukishima. Ginjo states that they have a way to return Ichigo's powers to him, but it seems they must act quickly if he's going to get back into the Soul Society in time to achieve his goals. Ichigo of course questions their motives when Ginjo explains that right now they have a common enemy which makes them allies. Come with us now and maybe you'll get what you want or cry about it and you will be a failure. Ichigo gets up and follows the two men back to their hideout. In their hideout, Ginjo explains the situation about him being a substitute Shinigami previously, and his betrayal by one of the captains. He also meets Giriko, but Jackie, Yukio, and Ryuka haven't been recruited in this version of events. Ginjo and Tsukishima show Ichigo their full brings and explain that Ichigo should be able to manifest his own, which will allow him to either reconnect with his Zanpak toe or at the very least give him the ability to continue fighting without it. Determined to reawaken Zangetsu, both White and Yuha, Ichigo accepts a deal with Ginjo to share some of his power with them in exchange for their assistance, and they also intend to return to Soul Society with him so that Ginjo can come face to face with Ukitake. Training begins immediately with Ginjo beating the hell out of Ichigo on repeat, but within the first hour Ichigo's full bring manifests without needing a specific object, unleashing a devastating amount of Ryatsu pushing Ginjo back forcefully. 
And in that exact moment, Ichigo is pulled into his inner world, where he sees white Zangetsu roaming around like a mindless zombie in confusion, and Yuha who is still able to move and speak, but Ichigo isn't sure what his name is. Yuha tells Ichigo that in order to regain his powers, he must call out their names, but he has to remember as they are a part of his soul. Determined not to waste any time, Ichigo thinks deeply and then exclaims, Zangetsu. And then he looks at the man in black and says, I apologize for forgetting your name, old man Yuha. Yuha explains that Ichigo's new allies aren't to be trusted, but they will be useful. Together they will share small fractions of their soul with the Fullbringers in order to empower their new comrades for the upcoming battle. After visiting Rukia and letting her know that her execution has been moved up, Renji tells Rukia that the Ryoka tried to invade the Serete and were confronted by Captain Ichimaru. He exits shortly after with the look of despair on his face, knowing that he can't save his childhood friend. He stops short by his former captain Sosuke Aizen. After short banter, the captain asks if Renji believes Rukia deserves to die. Renji is hesitant to answer, but Aizen goes on to explain that what Rukia did is hardly worthy of punishment by execution. And so Renji replies, no, I don't believe she deserves to die. And in a much more confident tone, Aizen goes on to ask him if he'd like to do something about it, even if it meant betraying the Soul Society. Renji hesitates. With a slight smirk on his face, Aizen assures Renji that there is a way to prevent Rukia's execution. All he has to do is agree to follow him and he promises to show him the path to Rukia's salvation. They hear a loud bang emanate across the Serete which startles Renji. As he looks into the distance and sees the top of a tower-like structure that has descended from the sky, still smirking, Aizen tells Renji that they must hurry as Rukia's time is running out. He makes no mind of the events taking place between the Zero Division and the invaders. Back at Kukaku's, immediately after Ichigo is taken away by Oetsu, Uryu, Chad, and Orihime begin frantically questioning Kukaku and Ganju as to who that guy was and what he did to Ichigo. Kukaku explains the Zero Division and their role in the world, although she admits that she's unsure as to why they would have taken an interest in Ichigo. She tells him that his fate is in the Zero Division's hands and there isn't anything that can be done, and advises them all to return to the world of the living. After debating amongst themselves about how to proceed for a while, Uryu suggests that since Ichigo led them there in order to save Rukia, they should stay focused on their original goal. Commenting that he believes no matter what happens, Ichigo can handle himself, they all agree and tell Kukaku to prepare the cannon in order for them to continue the rescue mission. At the royal palace, immediately following Ichigo's exile, Ichibe is summoned by the Soul King. After exiting Reo's quarters, Oetsu questions Ichibe as to what the will of their king is. Ichibe states that it is the will of the Soul King that they are not to intervene with Ichigo Kurosaki again. Oetsu makes it known that he is still confused as to why they were ordered to intervene in the first place, and Ichibe admits that he isn't even sure, but it isn't their place to question the will of Reo. Ichibe states he's unsure as to what will happen considering this is twice now that he's had to black out the name of the Quincy King, and he is sure it won't last for very long this time. Ichigo exits his inner world sporting a look much more like the one he had after regaining his Shinigami powers in the Fullbring arc and at the beginning of the Thousand Year Blood War. He tells Ginjo that he now has a method of re-entering Soul Society without a Senkaimon thanks to Zangetsu and that he'll be sharing his power with Ginjo, Tsukishima, and Giriko in exchange for their assistance in rescuing his friends. The Ryoka use Kukaku's cannon to invade the Serete. Upon touching down, they are cornered and confronted by Ikaku and Yumichika. Ikaku mistakes Chad as the strongest due to his size and orders Yumichika to kill the Quincy, stating that they better hurry before their captain arrives and steals all the fun. Uryu tells Orihime to assist Chad as he believes he can handle Yumichika on his own, but he is followed by Ganju. As Ikaku and Chad begin to clash, Orihime looks up at the sky and whispers, Hurry, Ichigo, I know you're coming back. We need you. Uryu actually pushes Yumichika to use his true Shikai release, and shortly afterwards, the battle begins to favor Yumichika, so much so that Uryu considers using his Let's Steal. But Ganju intervenes with his fuckery. <laughs> The sand shit. He does the sand magic shit, I forget what it's called. At least delaying their inevitable defeat. The scene cuts back to Chad being suspended in midair by the throat by Ikaku. Him not even being able to push Ikaku into using his Shikai. Right as Ikaku is about to deal the killing blow on Chad, a garganta opens above the Serete. As Ichigo and the Fullbringers enter the Serete, everyone senses his spiritual pressure, which shocks them all, even the head captain is alarmed by it. He orders Captain Zoraki and Kuchiki to intercept the strange Ryatsu, only to realize that Zoraki is already chasing after it. Ichigo searches amongst his friends Ryatsu and realizes that Chad is the closest to death, and so he uses Sonido to snatch Chad from the death grip of Ikaku. The Fullbringers are ordered by Ginjo to take down as many captains and lieutenants as possible while searching for Ukitake. With Ikaku now facing Ichigo, he asks what the hell Ichigo even is. How come he looks like a Soul Reaper? Why is he able to use hollow abilities? Then says, fuck it, let's fight! Ichigo responds by saying he doesn't have time for this. Chad is your opponent, he just needs a little boost. Or he may too. 
Ichigo then proceeds to cut his hand and drip some blood into Chad's mouth while offering Orihime some as well. She's grossed out, of course, but Ichigo explains that this is a technique that he's learned from the old man, which allows him to share his soul with others. Reluctantly, she takes a sip. Ichigo states that Chad and Orihime have been given something that the old man called a shrift. Chad has the shrift D, the devil while Orihime has been given R, the Regenesis. Ikaku gets sick of waiting and attempts to strike Ichigo. He gets face palmed and planted into the ground. Ichigo tells Chad and Orihime they should have more than enough to handle this battle now. Stay safe. And is gone in a flash. Ikaku stands back up laughing maniacally saying that that guy might be really strong but he has no idea what's coming for him. The captain's gonna love that guy. He then releases his Shikai. Ichigo appears next to Uryu who was down and considering using his lead steel against Yumi Chika. Ichigo tells Uryu not to use that outdated form and gives him a drop of his blood. Ichigo tells Uryu that he now has more than enough power to beat Yumi Chika. And don't worry, you can leave the rest of this to me as he heads straight for Rukia's holding cell. Yumi Chika states that he doesn't know what that guy did to you but it's not going to be enough to help. And Uryu proclaims that he is now the antithesis. <laughs> While Ichigo is following Rukia's soul ribbon, which is leading him directly to her holding cell, we see Gin Ichimaru, Izuru Kira, Kaname Tosin, and Shuhei Hisagi meeting up with Captain Aizen and Lieutenant Abarai back at the 5th Division's headquarters. Having sensed the gathering of these spiritual pressures, Captain Hitsugaya is spying in on the conversation taking place. Aizen explains to his crew that their mission is to rescue Rukia and flee from the Serete, going on to state that everyone here has been chosen to assist as he believes they all have a true sense of justice in their hearts. Aizen invites Gin into his private quarters and in a taunting manner questions him as to why he neglected to inform him of the accelerated rate at which Ichigo Kurosaki is progressing. Without giving Gin enough time to reply, Aizen jokingly answers for him, stating that they both know it won't make any difference in the grand scheme of things. He simply decided to alter his plan of action in response to this impressively unpredictable situation they found themselves in. Captain Hitsugaya heads to the Squad 1 barracks in order to inform the head captain of the information he has gathered. As Ichigo arrives at Rukia's holding cell, the path is blocked by Byaki Akushiki and Jushiro Ukitake. While staring down Byakuya, Ichigo demands he move out of his way, stating that he won't bother wasting his words on someone like Byakuya, someone who would so willingly allow his own family to be executed. There's no honor in his actions. Byakuya smirks and replies, What would a child like you know about honor? You know nothing of nobility and the responsibilities it comes with. You're not a soul reaper. You're not even a hollow. You're a cheap mockery of everything the Soul Society stands for. You're gonna die on your hands and knees, and there's no honor in that. With his blade pressed against his throat, Ichigo tells Byakuya to shut his mouth. He then leaps back and tells Byakuya to go ahead and release his Bankai, stating, I'm gonna crush your pride, your honor, and your Bankai in an instant. This action leaves Byakuya in silence, and both he and Ukitake are visibly unnerved by the speed Ichigo just displayed. Ukitake attempts to talk Ichigo into retreating, when suddenly he's caught off guard by a flying kick to the side, dealt by Ginjo, which sends Ukitake flying off into the distance. Ginjo looks back at Ichigo and states, Don't worry, I'll handle that guy. You focus on saving the girl. Byakuya proclaims, Scatter, Senbon Sakura, and begins to surround Ichigo in a tsunami of flower petals, while explaining that each and every one of them is a part of his blade. But before he can even finish talking, Ichigo deflects each and every one of them, once again leaving Byakuya in shock. Ichigo states to Byakuya, you should release your Bankai while you still have the chance. Do you really want to be defeated by a child so easily? Your pride is going to get you killed. As Byakuya becomes even more visibly angry, and right as he's about to shout the name of his Bankai, Kenpachi Zaraki comes crashing down in between the two of them. Kenpachi says, hey kid, I've been looking all over for you. You've got some freaky spiritual pressure emanating from you. Kenpachi looks back at Byakuya with the look of bloodlust written all over his face and tells him to get lost. This is my fight now. Unless you both want to fight me at the same time. Byakuya states this mock soul reaper isn't worth my time anyways. He's all yours. In an attempt to protect his ego and not having to resort to using his full power, Byakuya actually begins to walk away. Ichigo shouts at Byakuya, I told you to release your Bankai. Even with this monster in front of me fighting by your side, the both of you will be no match for my Shikai. Kenpachi just laughs and says he likes this kid. Byakuya once again is visibly shocked. He asks Ichigo, are you implying that that massive blade you call a Zanpakuto is in its sealed state? Do you think I'm a fool? How dare you continue to mock me with such lies? And with a smile on his face, Ichigo raises his Zanpakuto towards both of the captains standing in front of him and shouts the words, Pierce the heavens, Zangetsu.